good evening people so what do you want me to discuss today uh, i'll tell you a small story i met a very old friend today she asked me tell me mona what are you are you a physician or a surgeon to that i replied well that depends on my patient if the patient is up she's awake i'm a physician and if she's been put to sleep hell of a surgeon i am so that's the beauty of my subject of specialty obstetrics and gynecology you get to be a physician and a surgeon at the same time now let's cut all this drama and get back to teaching funny that after being a surgeon and a physician now i'm trying my luck in teaching mm, yeah i enjoy doing that very much so today's topic of discussion is hormonal contraception i'm not interested in those natural methods then your tubal ligation and all those non hormonal things we'll be talking about hormonal contraception there are short acting hormonal contraceptions and there are long acting ones the short acting ones if you know are combined oc pills c o c s is combined oc pills or as some call it o c p s oc pills all right this these have both estrogen and progesterone then there are the other class of short acting hormonal contraceptions the pops progesterone only pills or the mini pills these are short acting ones taken almost daily then there are long acting hormonal contraceptions which are also called lac lac means long acting reversible contraceptives all right these are long acting but these are reversible close to being ideal contraceptives so lac contraceptives include injectables you can inject them at intervals or implants you can implant them under the skin or intrauterine devices which have progesterone so progesterone iud's all right so what are the mechanism of actions mechanisms of action of these hormonal contraception if you have read contraception ever you will know that one important mechanism of action is inhibition of ovulation and if you were attentive enough you will remember that oc pills have both estrogen plus progesterone now tell me how these two hormones the very important pregnancy hormones are the ones preventing the occurrence of a pregnancy how does that happen estrogen and progesterone are the hormones responsible for maintaining a pregnancy but what does estrogen do if you remember the class on normal menstrual menstruation i took an important action of estrogen is to give negative feedback to the pituitary and hypothalamus two what will happen if it gives a negative feedback to pituitary and hypothalamus there is going to be decreased fsh decreased lh both lh and fsh will be decreased that's why you don't have the action of these gonadotropins follicle stimulation will not take place lh is not there ovulation will not take place all right that's one important mechanism of action inhibition of ovulation next is now this was a major role of estrogen with progesterone also playing a role because it also has a negative feedback effect on both fsh and lh all right second mechanism of action is pre or second and third both are predominantly because of progesterone this is endometrium endometrium is non receptive to implantation because of the progesterone effect on endometrium it is always in the secretory phase which is not receptive to an implant it is always like it is a premenstrual endometrium third is cervical mucus cervical mucus becomes thick under the influence of progesterone like it is in the second part of cycle after ovulation and fertilization should have taken place so these three are the most important mechanisms of action of any 
hormonal contraceptives that we are using now the number of hormones i told you about are these and all these have various combinations of these three mechanisms of actions now let us see which one has which action the mechanism will widely depend on the content of the hormonal contraception and the dose in which each content is present coming to the first contraceptives ocps oral contraceptive pills or combined oral contraceptives it has ethyl estradiol in the range of 20 30 to up to 50 this 20 is very low dose this is low dose and this is high dose contraceptives this has been asked towards it that's why i'm telling you this then the progesterone content is usually lng can be desogestrel can be ciproterone or can be gestodine dinogest anyone usually and the one in mala and in malady is lng the dose here varies from 100 in the low dose contraceptives to 250 what is the unit mcg this is important micrograms so this is your dose of estrogen and progesterone in ocps easy to remember now coming to pops pop or minipil it has lng of the dose of 30 micrograms only and desogestrel will be 75 micrograms now if you see oc pills lng was in the range of 100 to 250 and in pop lng is at 30 micrograms one third the dose in oc pills so what is the mechanism of action of oc pills we have discussed all the three things inhibition of ovulation because of the estrogen content is there all right then there is endometrial effect endometrial receptivity is decreased and then there is this third action of cervical mucus thick in cervical mucus this is both actions of estrogen and progesterone are there now if i talk of mini pill mini pill has a very low dose of progesterone 30 mcg of this so it does not have this action it does not have the action of inhibition of ovulation it only affects the endometrial receptivity and makes the cervical mucus thick and that is how it acts in as a contraceptive although fertilization ovulation and fertilization might take place the endometrial receptivity will be decreased and the embryo will not implant or if the cervical mucus is thick enough which is an important action sperm will not penetrate through the mucus and ovulation will be inhibited now coming to the lo longer acting ones implants the implants which are available are norplan jedel and implanon norplan and jedel yeah norplan and jedel have lng levonorgestrel and implanon has etonorgestrel or three keto desogestrel that's not important etonorgestrel that's what's been the dosages here is norplan has lng 216 mg and jedel has 150 mg and this has etonorgestrel of 68 mg all right now the average life time for which implants are used is 5 years for the first 2 years of use they release about 60 to 100 micrograms of progesterone per day all right and later that is after 2 years they release a progesterone of 30 mcg per day now that comes to be equal to the dose of mini pill later in the stable state while in the first 2 years it has a comparatively higher dose so here the mechanism of action is that it will have inhibition of ovulation effect it will have inhibition of ovulation effect for the first 2 years only this and this all the effects will be there for the first 2 years later this effect will not be there this and this will be there this we are talking about implants and this was pop and if you come 
pair this with COC, it has COC has all the three actions. Alright, so getting my point, POP and implanon have a very low dose of progesterone in blood per day, which is around 30 mcg. That's why the only two mechanisms by which they act are endometrial receptivity is decreased and cervical mucus is thickened. They do not inhibit ovulation, while COC does. Now coming to the second long-acting contraceptive, that is Injectable contraceptives. Injectable contraceptives mein sabse important is your DMPA. The dose here is 150 milligrams. What was the dose in implants? It was also close to 150 milligrams. It was 150, 216 or 68 milligrams. Alright. This was for 5 years. So the dose came to 30 mcg per day. But here the dump is depot medroxy progesterone acetate. This is a form of progesterone. So this 150 mg of dumpa which we give DMPA is only for 3 months. Alright. And net N the dose is 200 mg which is for 2 months. That means you have to give a repeat dose every 3 months or 2 months in each of these. Now roughly if you calculate the amount of progesterone per day. Now this division is not given in books how much progesterone will be available in the body per day if you give dumpa for three months all right this i'm just giving you to have a rough idea how much estrogen should be there in the body per day rough not theoretic now see 53 months we're talking about dmpa three months for three months the dose in body is 150 mg the injection which you have given so for one month if you divide it there is going to be 50 mg for a month in the body that means 30 days 50 mg that means in one day it is 50 by 30 that comes to around 1.6 mg milligram now see this dose that means i just want you to know that 1.6 milligram around is the amount of progesterone which will be available in the blood every day if you give 150 mg every three monthly all right is that clear so this is in milligrams very high compared to 100 to 250 mcg which we had in cocs and much higher than mini pills or implants which had a dose of 30 mcg per day only so this has all three actions of inhibition of ovulation endometrium and cervical mucus so it has all the three effects all right easy to understand now there is this last hormonal contraception progesterone sorry progesterone iud progesterone iud the trade name is merena if you have heard there is this intrauterine device which has progesterone impregnated in it how much progesterone is that total total is 50 mg milligrams and daily it releases 20 micrograms of which progesterone <coughs> it is lng levonorgestrel 50 mg of levonorgestrel is there so 20 mg close to the mini pill dose so what will be the mechanisms of action apart from those one two and three which i have been telling you there's a fourth action of foreign body effect just like any other property Sorry, any other intrauterine device. Alright, firm body effect is also there. The effect on ovulation is erratic. In some women, it causes an ovulation. So, in some women, this inhibition of ovulation effect is there. While the effect on endometrium and the effect on cervical mucus is consistent. So these three effects are always going to be there. In some, it might inhibit ovulation because of its local effects. All right. So if we compare all of them, what are the mechanisms? Inhibition of ovulation. Decreased endometrial receptivity. And thickened cervical 
म्यूकस इफ आई आस्क सी ओ सी कंबाइंड ओसीपल्स ई प्लस पी बोथ आर देर ऑल द थ्री एक्शन आर देर इफ आई से पी ओ पी प्रोजेस्ट ऑन ओनली पिल और ऑल्सो कॉल्ड मिनी पिल और इम्प्लांट इट विल नॉट हैव दिस इफेक्ट एंड इम्प्लांट माइट हैव दिस इफेक्ट इन द फर्स्ट टू ईयर्स ऑफ यूज लेटर बोथ ऑफ दीज विल हैव दीज इफेक्ट डेफिनेटली then coming to injectables because they are very high doses given for a short period of time three monthly intervals that's why they have all three actions and when you come to iud progesterone iud's this is in some women and this is consistently present plus a foreign body effect is there all right thank you very much again reminding you if you have doubts please post nobody has yet ever had any doubts in any of my lectures many reasons could be there i am not going to discuss all those things so please if you have doubt post in the comments i am going to answer those doubts definitely thank you i don't know how to stop this actually in fact i've forgotten it call control plus Yeah that's bad shift plus